Now we want to talk about very serious things. Do you understand? I want to talk about very serious things and I want to begin by talking about the Eucharist. You listened to me yesterday. I have dedicated my episcopate in the Archdiocese of Kisumu to the most blessed sacrament of the altar. That is the Eucharist. And as I said yesterday, the Eucharist, the church teaches us is the source and summit of Christian life. It is the origin of all Christian life. It is the climax of all Christian life. It means without the Eucharist, there is no church. You take away the Eucharist, you have destroyed the church. It cannot exist because the Eucharist is Christ himself. The Eucharist is the greatest gift man ever received from God. And when you get the greatest gift from God, how do you behave in the presence of that gift? What do you do with that gift? It's a question I am leaving with you. We need to continue reflecting on it over and over again in the Eucharist is the greatest gift and all the other sacraments make reference to it. Remove it and you have removed the church. That means the Eucharist requires all our highest reverence, all our highest respect. All our all. In the presence of the Eucharist, I am nothing. Because I am in the presence of God, who tells me, don't come close. Who tells me, remove your shoes. But in the Eucharist, that God allows us to eat him. For him to come into us. The one whom angels in heaven adore with bended knees, prostrate on the ground, allows we simple human beings, unworthy as we are, to take him into ourselves. So the Eucharist requires our special attention as the community of faith. And I'm inviting the community of faith of the Archdiocese of Kisumu. Because when I talk here from this church, I am talking to the entire Archdiocese. Let us be careful how we deal with the Eucharist. How we deal with Mass. When we come to Mass, I hinted a bit to it during the homily. When you depart from home, coming from us, how do you dress? Do you remember you are going in the presence of the greatest gift the human person has ever received, will ever receive from God? Are you aware of that? Do you compose yourself properly? Do you come? To join Mass at the beginning of Mass? Mass does not begin with the first reading. Mass does not begin even with the sign of the cross. Mass, once the priest leaves the sacristy and is on the procession, the choir has begun singing, the Mass has begun and you should be judged. Don't rush coming to church. No. Come to church comfortably. Why are you running? You know the distance between your house and the church. And God has given you the capacity to calculate the distance. Your home is one kilometer from here. And you have walking capacity. You know what distance, what time is going to take you to move from your house to come here. 
Take time to come. Don't enter the church when the procession is on. No. Be seated and sing with the choir because singing is praying. Already the procession invites all of us to be seated and ready for Mass. If you, if you find Mass, the first reading has already been read, don't come in. Wait for the next Mass. Because you have missed a very important part. Because we move from the Word of God, then we go to the table of the Eucharist. They are connected. And then throughout that session during Mass, be composed, show the highest respect to God and to your neighbor, the person seated with you in the church. And behave as if you are celebrating your last Mass. What would you do if you knew this Mass was your last Mass? Behave that way. What would you do if you knew this Mass was your only Mass? There will be no other. That is how you are supposed to behave. A priest after ordination is normally advised to celebrate every Mass like this as if it was his Mass, as if it was his last Mass, as if it was his only Mass. I say and put the same challenge to all of you. Let us take the Eucharist with the seriousness that it deserves. Number two, during Mass, let us reduce our movements. There should be no unnecessary movements in Mass unless the movement is liturgical. And you know liturgical movements, isn't it? Moving from the pew to come and read and going back to your pew, that is a liturgical movement. Any other necessary movement don't make, especially if you are here. People who have the privilege of being on this side avoid unnecessary movement because you are distracting about over a thousand people looking at you from this side. So when you come here, you come with glue on your behind, you sit, you don't stand. Unless you have to stand. Unless you are making liturgical movement, which is acceptable. Of the rest, there should be no movement. And there are certain times in the Mass when nobody is supposed to move, not even the bishop. One during presidential prayers when the main celebrant says let us pray freeze no movement it happens three times at the beginning of mass at the end of mass and in the middle of mass just before the eucharistic prayer number two during the naungama i confess no movement. During the readings, no movement, zero movement completely. Because instead of people listening to the word of God, our eyes are made in such a way that they easily turn to movement. And they ignore the, the ear. So when readings are going on, zero movement. Especially here. Especially here. When the homily is going on, zero movement. Zero movement. You will distract people if you move. You may be allowed to move only during when a song is being sung. When a song is being sung, you may be allowed to make a movement that is necessary only. During the Eucharistic prayer, consecration, no movement, zero movement, completely. And then you come to the time of communion. Now that is a serious time. Don't play, don't play about with it. The time for communion, it is serious. Remember, you are coming before 
the great